So before our last break, we went through this process of creating a WordPress site. And if I get to this point, it seems to work. Now, when we do it in class, it seems so easy. The instructor makes it look so easy. And when I try it at home, it doesn't work because I missed a step or two. So what I like to do at this point is um, answer the question about how do I get back to my dashboard? Because now that we've installed the site, we're going to spend our time in this dashboard. But to kind of show you the more real world way about how this would be working, let's do this. I'm currently using Firefox to view my site. You may be using Edge or Chrome, whatever you are. Whatever browser you're using, close it completely. I was using Firefox. I'm going to switch over to a different browser. Because a lot of times what we do when we use these web browsers, we log in and we just have it say auto remember my login and all of that. But in more like a real world, especially when you go home and try to do this, there is no auto login, you haven't set it up yet. So if you're doing this at home, you need to be able to get back to your site. So this simulates that in terms of there's no web browser running. And now I'm going to go to a different browser. I'm going to go to Chrome. If you right now were in Chrome, close it, and we're going to go to Firefox. If you were in Edge, close it, and now we're going to go to Chrome, whatever. Whatever I was in, now I'm going to use a different one. And I want to get back to my site. My site address, I'll put it in the notes, is localhost slash the name of my site. This is to get used to that we may have already been where we needed to be, but then we close the browser and we need to get back to it. Well, this looks exactly like when we were about to install it. But now that it's installed, if you press enter, now it's installed. The site is there. There's no more like, let's install it, because it's installed. But it's the same link. Localhost slash WordPress lets you go back to view your website. And this gets into the aspect of WordPress that once we use WordPress, we have the front end, we have the back end. We have the part your visitors see, and we have the part you, or admin, see. So if I have victorsbakery.com online, people are going to see victorsbakery.com. They go to that link and they're going to see my site. But then I need to log into the admin screen on victorsbakery.com. And that's a slightly different address. What the users will see is localhost slash WordPress. What I need to see as the admin is localhost slash WordPress slash WP dash admin. That extra little part of the address, that's the WordPress admin screen. So taking it a step further, if this were on the real internet, victor.com is what the user would see. Now it have victor.com slash wp dash admin. The operative part, of course, is the wp dash admin at the very end. That'll take you back to your dashboard. Because what I'm looking at in the browser right now, that's the front end. That's um, what the users will see. Not the control panel, not the dashboard of WordPress. It's found right here. So on the web browser, I'm seeing this. I don't, I don't want to see this part. I want to see the dashboard. I want to log into the dashboard, wp-admin. There's a login uh, button at the bottom. Too. We're not going to leave that there, because if we have our button to log in, so will the hackers. So there is a built-in login right here, but we're going to take that away. We don't want to give them that easy way to try to get into our site. Localhost slash WordPress slash WP admin, press enter on that. 
And here we go. Now it's got the spot for me to to sign in. So sign in with the uh, with those credentials that you made up a moment ago. In my case, admin and password. In your case, probably the same. Or if you picked real logins and passwords, whatever you typed in there. Log in. And now we're back at the dashboard. Question. Need a little help? Sure. So we'll go, we'll look at a little bit in general about the WordPress interface and so forth. Um, and then, of course, then segue into how do I set up this WordPress to sell products. But first, let's orient ourselves a little bit here. I mentioned in the notes that there is what the users see, what your visitors see, and what you see as the admin. Well, we, we still need to switch back and forth between those two once in a while because I might need to make some changes to my site and then see what those changes actually look like. And we do that up here on the top left. If you hover your mouse over the name of your site, mine is Victor's Bakery, of course. If you hover over it, it says Visit Site. So try that. Hover over the name of your site, click Visit Site, and then now I see it like my visitors. One difference is now there's this bar at the top that recognizes that you're logged in as the admin. So if I want to then browse my site and, OK, it looks good, but actually this font is too big. Let me make a change there. I need to go back to the dashboard. So once again, you click over to the name of your site and click Dashboard. So getting used to jumping between those two screens will be very useful little shortcut, you can just click the name of your site. You don't even have to select visit. Clicking on the name of your site does the same thing. Saves you like half a half a, a click. So just click on the name. And if you want to get really advanced, you can do right click, open a new window. So you can have maybe two windows of your site open at once. One is the admin window, and then one is the um, the visitors window. So you don't have to switch between it and lose your place. You can. So any changes, it will show, it'll show it on the other window, but you still have to do a refresh or a reload. You just have it on two different windows so you don't lose your place. I don't want to lose my place in the dashboard, but then over here, then I just press this refresh button here, reload, and then it shows the, the update after you save it over here. You can also do right click, open a new tab, just put it in two tabs here if you want, whatever way. You all have nice big monitors, so you, you could probably manage two windows at once. Mine's a little smaller, so I'll only focus at one window at a time. 
that's one thing to note here. Switching between back end, front end, between visit site and dashboard. Uh, when we're here in the dashboard, we have a bunch of um, kind of welcome stuff. At some point, you should um, you you should kind of see some of this, learn more, and so forth. You'll do this later. It's got some starting points. Write your first blog. Well, my site's not really going to be a blog, so maybe I'll ignore that. I need an about page or a set up home page. So this is some some good stuff for you to do at some point if you want. Um, as a beginner. And then there's other info here that you've got some stuff in your site. There's some activity. Oh, look at that. I already have a comment. My site is famous. No, this is just a little placeholder that someone commented on your site. One of the things that people really loved about WordPress is that it has the very easy ability for people to comment on your site, to give you feedback. Back in the old days when you were programming it from scratch by the actual code, you had to program this kind of complicated way to for people to comment and interact but with modern software like WordPress it's built in so this sort of welcome screen is quick info let's do this hover over the appearance menu item and then from here we have sub items we have customize let's click on customize this is under appearance. One of the things that people also really like about WordPress is that it's very customizable in basic or advanced ways. And this is one of these screens here. I actually changed the name of my website and I don't want it to be Victor's Bakery. There's a very easy way to make changes. Notice it says here, shift click to edit this element. You don't have to make any changes, but I'm just showing you that all of the stuff that you see can be customized through this screen. You see, what's the site identity? What are the colors of my site? How are my menus set up? I'm not going to spend a lot of time here yet, but I'm just showing you that you can make these changes from the screen you preview it here you can activate these buttons down here what are these three buttons what do you think they mean view on mobile, view on tablet, view on yeah view it on different devices right now this is how my website would look on a regular computer monitor if someone's visiting on their tablet it'll kind of resize the screen to show here's what might it, how it might look like how things might move around and then on a little mobile phone like that. So you get that nice preview. Um, if you then like your changes, you can click publish. I'm not making any changes just yet. Because first of all, I don't even like the design that it gave me. It's so plain. So whatever I've done here, I'll just click the X to cancel it. But if I liked my changes, I've got publish. I'll cancel. And it'll confirm, and I'll say yes. Let's cancel those changes. Because under appearance, I want to also look at one, one other thing here. Uh, we had customized, and we had this nice interface to make changes to our site. And some of these things here were also in the customized screen, such as themes, widgets, and menus. But if we go to Appearance, Theme Editor, this gets you to this very advanced screen that they have to warn you about. Earlier when I, or did I ask this today, how many of you have any experience in HTML programming? A few people. If you know HTML programming, this is the screen you want to go to, because here's where you can edit the raw code of your site. Now for most of us we don't want to do this, it's too advanced. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say here, it doesn't matter if you click I understand or go back, but I'll click I understand and what it gives you here is here's all the code that your website is made out of. Here is six thousand three hundred and eighty two lines of code 
that your site is made out of. And if I know what this means, like, oh, I'm going to give myself more padding, 1.5. So don't, don't do any of this. I'm just showing you that if you know what this code is, you can do it this way. Well, why don't I just click a nice pretty button to do it? Of course, do that. If you're not familiar with this code, you want to use the interface that it gives you to do this stuff. But sometimes there are some really advanced things that there's no button for. And that's where you go into the code and make the change exactly how you want. So are you talking about the yeah, that's also another aspect of it that if I were to make changes to this code here, there's no backup to revert it. The change you made is a change you made. So it's saying if you duplicate your folder and do this other like copying of these files as a backup, then you can work with the copy so that it doesn't affect the original. And that's way more advanced than we're going to get into this class. But there's a little link there to have a, a, uh, a tutorial on what to do. Um, that's a little more advanced than I want to talk to. Let's talk about themes first, and then we'll answer that question. So most of us will not spend t too much time here. This is the whole, this is the raw, th these are the guts of your site. Most of us don't need to do anything here. I'm just pointing it out that if you do have some experience in those languages, it's here, theme editor. Most of the time we'll just press a button and do what we need. Let's switch over here to appearance themes. I haven't changed, made changes yet, just don't worry about that. Go to themes. Right now, I've got the 2019 theme active. Get a little preview. I have these other themes to work with, 2017, 2016. I want to activate a different design, a different theme, 2017. So if you hover over, click activate. Which one you want to be 2017. Once 2017 is active, I want to view my result. I want to visit site. So once again, up at the top menu, visit site. Here it is. So got this graphic at the top that I wish there was a way for me to change. I wish there was a way for me to make it be exactly what I want, not just their starting point. Yes, of course, you can customize this. You got the customize button. But this starts off with having that graphic, and there's your text, and I don't like that it says just another WordPress site, I want to change that. You can fully customize these things. And I want to change that, well, we'll talk about that. But here I made a change to a different theme, a different design. I go back to the dashboard, go back to appearance themes, I can try the other one. Well, there's only three built-in themes but that, that come in installed, but WordPress is very popular software with a variety of themes that exist. We just need to add a new theme. Right here. Let's click under or next to themes, add new. I have here featured 15 themes. I have all of these other cool themes that I could work with. They all have, if you hover over, preview or install. And the ones that are not free. They do have like a little symbol that has a dollar symbol that it's not free. But nowadays, most of these are freemium in terms of I'm going to get a lot of functionality out of it for the free version and then for like a little uh, other extra things that I might need. That's when I might need to pay. And the prices of these vary a lot from like $5 to like $100 one time fee. But I've dealt with clients where we use the completely free version and it does everything that they need. So they didn't have to invest in that. So here's 15. There's popular. Here's 4,000 to choose from. 
Oh, I like that one. That one says, Hello Elementor. Um, there's Latest. 7,000 themes. And then there's Search. So what if I'm looking for a restaurant focused theme for my food type of website I narrowed it down to 322 and I browse around here and I could probably find one or two that I like and the great thing is you can install as many of them as you want only one will be active at a time but you can install several ones give them a try customize them put your own graphics and then use them so you can browse you can search you can pick anything you want and then pick any any theme besides the ones we have installed uh, whatever you whatever you see you can get a preview click on the preview and it kind of shows you this is how your site might look like whatever you see here I'm gonna click restaurant recipe and install Can you follow what you're installing? Nope, like I said, you can pick anyone you want. So WordPress design is powered by themes. Themes are custom code, often from a third party. That are often premium you get a lot of free features you might pay for more and you can try out hundreds of themes for free and have one active at a time and customizable. So I found one. I thought it was interesting. I, I clicked the install. So you get these from the dashboard, appearance, themes, and you have to click install and then click activate. I installed whatever one I, I liked there and now the button says activate so make sure you click the activate because you'll still have the other one active until you ins until you activate the one you just installed you won't see any change so people forget that as a beginner they forget to activate it they installed it but they forget to activate it you can have one theme active per WordPress, but you can have many installed. So I installed this one, and I'm also going to activate it, and then I'm going to visit site to see what it looks like. Ooh, Victor's Bakery, it's got that graphic. I want to change that graphic. I want to change things about it. I want to add content. I want to whatever. Each theme will have its own customized specific buttons. On the other theme a little while ago, when I went to customize, I didn't have as many as these as this one. I didn't have this home main content. I didn't have a featured section. So the great thing about WordPress is that it's very customizable. But the bad thing about WordPress is that it's very customizable. And you're going to get lost with it, or it's not going to do exactly how you want, or there's going to be multiple ways to do the same thing, or that one extra like really cool feature is part of the please pay us, that sort of thing. So whenever I talk about these concepts in these classes unless you have the exact theme that I installed you might have different things and that's okay it's just that on mine mine has this footer options 
yours doesn't. Well, that just means that your theme doesn't support that one little thing that mine has, and that's not bad. It's just that your theme is a little different, and maybe it has a better thing than mine. So there's no wrong answer. So your sword will get lost. Well, it doesn't matter what we're doing right now. It's just like checking different designs. I'm not going to say click on this. I'm just showing different, different oh, things to do. It's not your final. Yeah, it's not the final design. It's still I'm still picking. Eventually, when we do the e-commerce part of it, I would recommend a certain theme just so that we all see the same thing. But for right now, we're just exploring it a little bit. So I won't make any changes, but uh, that was one particular theme. I, I kind of am surprised that this looks this looks fine because a lot of times what happens, and it might have happened to you, when you pick one of these amazing themes, the preview looks amazing, but then when I see my site, there's not much there. And that's very common because that little preview kind of shows it in the best light possible after more customization. And that's normal. So if you're if you thought you were picking an amazing theme because mostly of the photo, um, you're going to have to still further customize your theme a little bit to match. This is sort of like when you see, you know, some food um, on, a, on a commercial, and that hamburger looks amazing. But then you, when you buy it, it's all squashed and the meat's falling out. Um, well, it's you know the advertisement was the best part of it, and the live version might not have been accurate. Going back to Victor's Bakery, back to the dashboard. Well, it, it's interesting that the real website and it shows customized, but when you keep to clients, they should not be customized. Right now, we're logged in, so they will see. So you will see this top admin bar because we're logged in but just to show you here if I was on a if the person is not logged in they won't see that in Chrome I'm logged in in Edge I'm not so they won't see the customize okay you have to be in another browser no. If you're on the same browser, but you are logged in in another window, it knows. Well, the big idea is that if you're logged in in any browser, you will see this admin bar. But if you're not logged in, you won't see the admin bar. Okay, yes, that, that's a good point to mention here. Is that, is that if you don't choose the e-commerce version of WordPress, you can use e-commerce? Well, remember, we're using an offline virtual version, which is fully unlocked. The one that you saw on the website for $45 a month, well, you're paying for some of these features. So I can still install e-commerce to this without having to pay for the online version, but it's not online. So eventually, I have to, when I get it online, depending what provider I go to, I have to pay some amount to get my site online. So when you create them for your clients, you're doing it this way versus going through WordPress to select them or off? It's either or. I, going up to WordPress, going to GoDaddy, going wherever, putting it live or offline. Uh, we usually do do it offline. We want to work on a version of the site that's not on the internet, not being found, not being trafficked. Someone's not trying to click to buy, even though it doesn't work. So we, as the as the professionals, we when we get hired, we we do this offline still. And once we craft the site perfectly, then we upload it to the real internet. So I guess my question is, when you're looking at using WordPress, you have those four or five options based on the pricing. And one of them, there's only one e-commerce. Well, let, let me stop you there. You are assuming that you're going to do it at WordPress.com. Remember, right. I, remember I mentioned GoDaddy.com, Bluehost, and so forth. So there's all of these other places with different price structures and everything. So anywhere that you get your website online, you're going to pay some amount. And then you're going to transfer your offline version into the live server at some point. Okay. So what is it, um, Woo, 
Yes, I, I'm getting okay. to that. So, when I installed this theme back on my dashboard, it gives me this little menu, or this item here. This theme recommends the following, that I do this plugin, this plugin, this plugin, and in your case, WooCommerce. So making a note here, you install, you activate a theme, oftentimes a theme will then recommend plugins to make it fully function. Plugins, we mentioned earlier here, plugins are extra bits of code that add more features. So a theme might be focused on e-commerce, and for that to fully work, it also expects the e-commerce plugin. And just like there's many themes, there's many plugins for every task. I might want to add a live chat feature to my site. Have you ever been to a website where there's a little pop-up in the corner saying, hey, would you like to talk to us about whatever? Would you like us to sell you whatever? We can activate that on WordPress as well. It's really cool. There's a plugin that does that, that it detects that someone's on your site, it sends you a message to your phone, and then you can be live with them. You're not even there sitting at your computer. Um, so that's a plugin. It's an extra feature. Not everyone needs that. It's not activated, so it's an extra feature, a plugin. So plugins add extra features, and there are many versions of the same feature. So there are many plugins that will focus on creating a chat ability, an e-commerce ability, a cool slideshow, whatever. Translation to translate it to different languages. There's many plugins. So the one we're going to care about in this class is WooCommerce. Is the e-commerce plugin we will use eventually. Next time, I guess. Uh, as we orient ourselves to WordPress, next time we'll focus on the e-commerce of it. So WooCommerce is the e-commerce plugin we'll use. Uh, plugins just like the themes, someone created them in the world and published it, and a lot of them are freemium in terms of um, you get a lot of great features, and then some of the extra features are paid for. WooCommerce is the same. You can get it for free. It works totally great, the free version, with the various clients that I've worked with. Um, almost all of them, the free version worked perfectly fine. But some of the really advanced things, like, um, like cross-selling and upselling, which I'll define later, that might have needed extra. And there was like an extra like $10 um, investment and such. But there's many of them. This is the one we'll focus on. And this is one of the most popular ones. So popular that the WordPress company themselves bought this company. And now it's kind of like an official WordPress plugin. They were around for a long time. They were gaining a lot of traction. And WordPress said, oh, we'll buy them and make them part of the family. So now this one's official. Are they usually single payment or subscription-based? They're usually single payment. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, but um, but now we, we that reminds us that like sometimes it uh, uh, it takes money to make money. So we'll talk about Woo WooCommerce a little later, but here um, as we work with this site, let's um, let's look at a couple more things. Um, this settings menu has a variety of submenus. And I'll go to Settings General. Here's some important stuff that I might want to know to change at some point. Like we saw this under Customize as well, Appearance Customize. This is this is one this is another place where I can change the name of my site. The text that appears right here when people see my site that again that doesn't have to do with the address if it was victor.com the screen that we're looking at here that doesn't affect that this is the, the name that appears 
and maybe I want you know the tagline or the subtitle of what my site is. I don't want it to be this. This is just a generic placeholder that they put there. Pictures Bakery, the best bakery west of the 805. You know, whatever. So um, I can put whatever I want there. And it's in a few words explain what your site is about. So now instead of having that generic message up here, no, it's not just another WordPress site. It's one of the best ones. I can put stuff there. Right now my, uh, my website is on localhost. It's not on the real internet. And this is a little too advanced and I want to mention, but this would be part of where, when I put it on the real internet, the address here would have the address of the real internet. So don't make any changes right now. We're not on the real internet. This is an advanced thing, too advanced at the moment. But here is where it would note what is the name of your address on the real internet. And that would automatically be filled for you once you buy, once you set yourself up on the real internet. If you went through WordPress.com and bought the account, that would already be correct. If I start with, with ZAMP and then eventually transfer it online, it is a little bit of a process. And part of the process is for this to be correct. If it was actually a different login email, there it is. Do I want to activate membership? That's another thing that people was very difficult to set up 5, 10, 15 years ago when you wanted to make a really advanced site. You just turn it on right here and people can create their own account. Right now there's really no point. There's nothing on my site really. But when I make my actual shopping cart and all of that stuff, well yeah, I want people to register to create an account to buy my products easily. We'll do that later. The language of my site, the time zone. Where in the world is UTC zero? London. So my, my website is not based in London. It's got the wrong time zone. The hours are going to be weird. So we want to set this to our proper UTC offset, which no one knows. Or what about the city? Los Angeles. So either we put 8, we are 8 in California, currently we are 8 time zones away from Greenwich Mean Time, but it would be better to, boot, to put Los Angeles, and instead of browsing through, where's Los Angeles? Well, it divides it into continents and all of that. So what would be better here is if you, if you click on that menu item and start typing LOS, It'll find it from where it is all over the place. If you need to change the date format, you can. It's going to show dates on your website in that format. If you need it in a certain format, you can do that. Time as well. If you're going with the usual AM, PM and such, there it is. If you're using 24-hour time, you can change that. Day of the week, you can change that if you want. So I made a few changes. I changed the name of my tagline. I changed the time zone. I'm going to save that. So, right now my site has some theme, and the first thing that I see is a hello world with a little quick welcome to WordPress. Let's talk about making this change to the default text of the website. But first we have to mention two concepts. WordPress has two types of screens, posts and pages. Posts are screens that change often, related to blogs, which is articles, whereas pages 
And these words are so generic that it's easy to confuse them. Pages are screens that don't change often. So about us, contact us, you know, those sorts of screens. I'm not going to be updating my email address of my business that often. I have the about us story about how we were founded. That's not going to change too often. Um, the ones that are going to change is we've got a new article in terms of here's a new blog post about our latest product. Here's a new article about, um, you know, tips for winter. This is Victor's Bakery. Maybe we've got a new recipe that we put out there. So posts is for content that changes, that gets updated often. You say, well, what about products? Um, it's still going to be pages. That one's a little bit of a quirky one, but when WordPress was invented, it wasn't really designed for products. So for product, you're still, products will still be in pages. I'm going to add new products every month or two months or week or whatever, but there's still not going to be posts. It's just the way that it is. Just remember that your products will be in a page. WordPress by default shows your latest post. You usually want a static page. You usually want to display a page, not the constantly changing, you know, article of the day or whatever. To set a static page, create a home page. Believe it or not, you don't actually really have a home page right now. Even though it looks like one, you technically have a post. You have one post, the latest article, the latest you know short message. We want a page. We want a page that will be visible first by the user. Set a static page. Create a home page in settings. Reading set static home page. We'll do this together in just a moment. To show you what we're about to do, here under settings reading. This is what it says. When a person visits your website, what will they read first? Your latest blog post. Um, I don't really want to do that. I want to show something. I want to show a, a welcoming picture, some text, something first. Well, it would be a static page. But we cannot set this yet because it says, okay, you want a static page? Set your home page. I, I don't have any page to set yet. I have a sample page, but that's not going to cut it and move the posts over to their own screen I don't I don't have it I don't have a screen for it so I can't do this yet but this is where we do it this is where we change what do they read first what do they see first and on my note I said in order to do this we need to create the page then we can set the page create a home page and the blog page if we're going to use the blog, this is more important. If we're not going to use the blog, this is kind of optional. But if you're also going to write blogs, if you're also going to write articles every once in a while, they should be on a blog page. So we're going to create a new home page, not a post, a page. This should be intuitive enough, perhaps from where I am right here, how might I create a new page? If you hover over pages, we have add new page. So let's do this. Under pages, add new. You also have a new button up here, new page. Pages add new. Uh, 
Um, you probably will get some pop-ups with a little bit of tips. Welcome to the world of blocks. Click this plus symbol at the top to add a block. Basically, when you design your site, you know, how do you want it to look? Sidebars, etc. We'll, we'll explore that later. I'm just going to close these tips. The title here, we'll say home. Start writing something. I'll say, welcome to Victor's Bakery, your number one source, whatever you want to type here. So here you have a sort of a word processor where you can add text, you can add bold, you can add links, colors, photos, etc. Um, notice I type stuff and like these are various blocks of content. Then I can I, select. I don't see down. I see only a couple. Uh, the big cause of C my choose. Nope, da back here in the dashboard, everything should look the same, only your theme will change what the actual site looks like. But let's see what's your speed. Well, you haven't, you haven't, um, you haven't scrolled, scrolled down. Um, can you scroll down? Well, I think that is actually correct then to that. Yeah, don't put that, don't put that. Um, the, uh, I guess it, nowadays the theme does then now give you extra features. So it looks like my theme has this ability for extra sidebars. So, um, so I typed something here, and then you know I could bold, align it, or I could add a pictures and such. I just want to create a little bit of text, a little bit of content, and then at the top right, publish. So on my notes I said to change the home page, we need to first create the home page, here it is, then we'll go back to settings, reading, and we'll say use this screen as the home page. So you have to first publish it up here. On the top right, publish. Um, it confirms one more thing about it. Will this be public, etc., etc., and then just click publish one more time. So publish one more time. Get the green bar that says it's been published. Let's go back to appearance, um, reading. And now we have the ability to mark this or set this as the home page, the first thing people see. Appearance, not appearance, sorry, re uh, settings, reading. So your home page will display a static screen, which I will select here as a home screen I just created. And then at the bottom of the screen, click Save. What's cool about this is that you can create various pages. I could call, I could create one, you know, home, default, home, winter, home, sale. I could create different screens with different pictures and text and marketing messages. And then, as appropriate, I just go back to my settings and change it whenever I need it. And so that that home screen that people will see will be different based on the season or if there's a sale or whatever I want and I can switch between them whenever I want and all of the content I created on each of those pages is there always ready to use ultimately 
all that we're doing here is being stored back on that database, that database that we created a while ago. And now when I visit the site, so the name of the the name of that page that I created, which is called home, is listed there. And then I see here's the welcome part. And again, depending on the theme, that text might be visible somewhere like that. It might be on the edge. It might not even be visible. Um, you can still further customize it. But because of this particular theme, I've changed it. It doesn't say that hello world part anymore. It says what I wrote here. And if I then added more graphics and text, then it would be much more complete looking. So, as I said earlier, this class, it's two weeks long. We spent today talking in theory about WordPress, about doing kind of a very advanced thing about setting up a virtual server, and then started to play with WordPress. I usually uh, include 20 to 30 minutes of open lab time at the end of the day for people to kind of try to work and ask individual questions and such. And we're getting to that time, class ends at 1. So if you manage to get it to work here, I would recommend spend the lab time to kind of play with these other screens. Again, in only two weeks, we're not going to be able to go through every single thing. Because when we come back next time, we're going to get back into WordPress, and then we're going to install WooCommerce. We're going to install the plugin that then activates e-commerce features. And then we're going to spend a lot of time on that. How does WooCommerce work? How do I add products? How do I accept payments and such? And that'll be our big focus for next time. General questions on things we talked about today? I hope you try this at home. I hope you try to download ZAMP and download that WordPress software and try it and make mistakes and make notes and then come with questions next time. Remember all of this that I've been doing? I've been recording it. I'm going to upload it after class. You can review all that we did. Send me an email. Ask for the, ask for the lecture videos of the WordPress class. I teach more than one class. So note, ask me in the note, please send me the lectures of the WordPress class. And everything that I did today will be in those videos. These notes that I've been writing, I'm going to give these notes to you right now. I'll turn the printer on if you want to print them. Um, if you want to email it to yourself, or take it on a flash drive or whatever, you can do that as well. If you need help with that, we'll do the lab time in a moment. But let me give you these notes, and then we'll wrap up for the day. And then do part two of the class next time.